Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. <clears throat> so today's upload is going to be uh, my video that's actually going on its third year um, in a row for Cool See the Coldest Fall Temperatures or Cool See a Cold Fall. It was, I, I don't know what it was exactly titled, but I remember uh, two years ago I first created or three years ago I first created it. Then I did it last year. And I'm doing it again this year, so I, I don't know. I just, in my opinion, it's just kind of cool that it's going on its third year. But uh, yeah, so it's self-explanatory by the title, and it's for 2019. Um, before we get into this video, I'd quickly like to thank you guys so much for the support I've been getting. Uh, it's been really outstanding. I I really appreciate it, and it means a whole world to me. So thank you for that. Um, and if you were, uh, if you wanna, if you're new to this channel and you wanna support this channel, you could do so by subscribing. It's a red subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, and it's a white one, if you are. Um, and also consider liking the video. If you're not, you know, ready to subscribe yet, but you like this video in particular, give the video a like. Um, and uh, you know, it's it uh, in our Leave a, leave a comment with constructive criticism, not nothing, you know, not um, something that is uh, annoying or troll worthy. So thank you for doing so. So the, uh, the I guess the, uh, the, <clears throat> the oh, I forgot, the, I'm losing my train of thought here. So basically the factors I'll be looking at in this, uh, this video is the Enzo outlook, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, Noah seasonal outlook, uh, this one's probably the least factor into my uh into my outlook i actually pretty much didn't factor it it in at all i think it's i just don't think they have a right idea because usually they just do it off of one model and they don't really update it until it comes in on into like the relatively short term because fall some of the months like october and you know, november are still are still far away so they don't really have the fine-tuned details so they just put whatever they um want since you know, they don't really need to um, put anything uh, else since it's still so far away. And then we'll be looking at analogs or basically, um, it says analogs, but it's supposed to be an A there. But uh, comparing previous falls to the previous one or looking at previous events. And in this case, I'll be just taking a look at what the Enzo impacts were on previous falls and basically making an analog map out of that. You'll see all out what I'm talking about. So right now, let's look at the Enzo outlook. So again... Um, I'll explain to you what the ENSO is uh, in a minute, or ENSO, but in right now, I just want to let you know what is going on. So, uh, maybe I should have, you know, first put the map of the explanation of what it is, but first I just want to let you know, because most people do know what this is, there is an ENSO neutral in store, you could see right there, to emerge in the next season and continue through the Northern Hemisphere, fall and winter 2019. 2020 so uh you could see august it's most likely to be uh a neutral then for september also neutral and then for october also neutral and it maintains it so it seems like fall is fairly safe to say there is going to be a neutral pattern in store for the fall months let's um go to see what the models are showing you know if you want to have the raw data you could see that the most of the, the more widespread the models are the less confidence that means they have because that means some models are showing a different scenario from a completely different scenario and you could see some are showing a weak el nino actually you could see the statistical average um of certain models are showing this green line right there is showing the a weak el nino but then these two lines the cp climate prediction center Council model and a DYN average, you could see it, it. It's red, and those are in the neutral, which is between 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. And I want to really emphasize this: that even though it's uh, there is a 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.5 um, for a short while, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a neutral pattern because it needs to be in a neutral pattern or an El Nino pattern or a La Nina pattern at least three months in order to be classified as um, that certain pattern. So it needs to be an El Nino f for, say, for three months in order for it to be an El Nino um, officially said. And that's why this is neutral. If it just keeps bouncing back and forth between neutral and El Nino, it will really be just... Um, I don't really know what it, then that will be. It will be... Um, it, I guess it would just be a, a neutral 
week out i don't know actually now that i think about it because see usually if, uh, the models that's actually a really good thought that i just came up and i have to search that up because if the models are usually bouncing back and forth between 1 and 1.5 that's still an el nino but if they're bouncing between um 0 0.5 and el nino usually they don't do it so erratically so that, that's why it usually doesn't happen but i'm assuming then um you know because it needs to be three months at least of that certain period in order to uh it needs to be at least three months long, like I mentioned. So that's actually interesting. But you can see most of them are showing a neutral pattern. So uh, what does uh, and what is an El Nino? What is an Enzo? What is an El Nino Southern Oscillation? Basically, it's an abnormal warming or cooling off the waters of South America, right in this region. And you can see that right now, this is these are the current sea surface temperature anomalies. And when you have a blue, uh, when you have a blue that is at least zero point negative zero point five or below, that is a La Nina. When you have an orange that is a negative. 0.5 degrees or above that's an El Nino and anything in between is a neutral right now there's more blue than uh, orange but it's not a La Nina pattern because it's just not clear cut I mean it's just not enough and there's also a little bit more orange out here but it's not enough for an El Nino so it's really right now um, it's kind of a neutral but a weak El Nino even though it may seem uh, deceiving that this line it may be La Nina because of these cooler temperatures right here as of right now, it's still a weak El Nino, but, I mean, it's going to fall apart within the next... It could be already falling apart right now, and it could be basically gone, except they haven't updated it. But, uh, you know, as the last advisor that they updated a couple days ago, it has, it's still an El Nino, but it's not going to be there for much longer, maybe a week or two. So now, what does a neutral pattern mean? All of that Enzo talk, you know, all that, all that, uh, that garbage. <laughs> if you want to just bring it down, uh, straight down to earth, you could see that this is what a neutral pattern looks like typically for the winter. Now, I'm going to emphasize, this is a fall forecast, right? Yes, so that's why this isn't necessarily too accurate. Uh, this is, maybe you could include November into this, um, and November is still technically fall. So, you know, November, if there was a neutral pattern, would be more cooler across the north, wetter and warmer across the south, allowing big storms to form across the northeast, and generally a fairly good setup for snow and cold across the eastern two-thirds of the country, I would say. However... What well, about the rest of the months? September, October, August, then, you know, th this doesn't really apply. So, um, I decided to create some analogs that are basically taking uh, neutral falls or years that were um, considered or falls that were considered neutral and I decided to see what their temperature anomalies were and how each month played out. So, right now you can see this is August through November of a bunch of years and you may be wondering what are these years why are they so random these are years that had a neutral fall which we are forecasted to have this year and you could see <coughs> that we will be looking at uh, quite a you know a wide variety of years from I think the latest one is 2013 2014 all the way to 1950 and August through November of those neutral falls released, um, or released, or just basically gave us something like this, a, a, a temperature anomaly where the eastern two-thirds of the country, or eastern half, I would say, rather, is a cooler while parts of the northwest, and northwest, not really, just the west, are warmer. Um, not terribly hot, but, uh, but definitely not, uh, you know, they're definitely above average. That is for the whole fall. So, um, you know, let's just take this now one by month, one by one. So this is what August is looking um, like for a bunch of these years, uh, those same exact years. And that's why I'm saying if this August that's upcoming plays out to be cold, then we could be looking at a a very uh, a very more likelihood that this will take hold because if the August is you know takes. Uh, is basically exactly what this map is showing or you know roughly then we could expect that um, September could be similar as well because of all these years that neutral falls showed us you could see a little bit um, warmer across the west as well but still chilly across the eastern half and then October it gets you know the warm get the warmth goes um pretty uh, strong it grows to a stronger magnitude rather than a chill which seems to dwindle away however look at that right there that is some um big big time uh anomalies right there and this uh, in the next month would actually push some of this warmth off the coast or just the warmth wouldn't be able to form and notice look at that this cold air is now into um, parts of eastern united states so it's looking very interesting as of now
So you could see that also there's a second wave possibly going in, and this would be you know in, delivered in December. But uh, we don't have December on this t uh, analog map because uh, I just you know it's fall. It's not this isn't a video about the winter. So now we let's go to the NOAA seasonal uh, outlook, and you could see uh, their 0.5 month uh, outlook for September is something like this, equal chances. So they're basically saying that September has the best chances of being, sorry, best chances of being cool out of all the three months. Because if you look at the other three months, um, you could see that's what shows. And I mean, come on, this is just ridiculous. In order for 100% of the US to be um, above average, uh, nigger, uh, that, that's, that doesn't happen. And you know they're not saying, that, but they're leaning towards uh, based on this map that a hundred, literally a hundred percent of the U.S. would be on the warmer side, which is obviously not true. But um, that's why I don't take their uh, forecasts with, you know, I take it with a grain of salt. Notice how there's a little bit of a difference into September or into November, and a little bit more um, less confidence, and that's obvious because it's further out. But still, um, I just don't agree with this, but again, the, the, they, they change this so many times by the time it comes up that it looks completely different. This is just kind of there just to, I guess, fool almost people, not really um, educate them. But if we were to now look at my final uh, forecast, what I think will happen, uh, you know, very cold. I don't think it will be like brutal cold in the fall, but compared to your average fall temperatures, like if you're average 60s, you could be looking at some days possibly like 49 and 50, um, 45. So on um, this, you know, average 60s um, throughout the whole fall, let's say, uh, you know, because I just don't think that it will be, you know, insanely brutal cold. Like, I don't think it will be record-breaking. But based on your averages, if you average against 60, like in November, you could be looking at, uh, like, 40s. Uh, this cold air, uh, this is just cold. So, to a lesser degree, just cold, I think, you know, this. if you if you live in these uh, parts, I think it will be just memorized or <laughs> remembered for being a fairly cold fall um, and uh, fairly substantial anomalies from average this is chilly so you know chilly uh you know it wasn't that bad it was just a little bit chilly and i think that's gonna be true as, uh, basically throughout the most of the fall maybe not october though october seems to be the warmest but we'll have to see how that plays out and you can see cooler this area is basically i just added in just in case um this could uh equally be uh not warm but average it could just be average so the northeast i think you know the in uh the coastal parts of the northeast i think they could be a little bit cooler since some of this air will spill in, but I just don't think it will really be cold. Um, but I think cooler is, a, you know, the best way to put it. And then here we have average. Um, this could either be warm or cold. I think as of right now, it's leaning towards the warmer side of these areas. But um, again, it's not going to be warm throughout the whole fall. Just if you look at the whole fall at the end, average it out, you know, you get a couple of pushes of warmer air and you only get one push of cooler air that averages out to be warmer. But um, nothing ridiculously too hot in these areas. Warm and I think hot in these areas right here. I think the West California, the Southwest has the biggest chance of being hot. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, this is like my least confidence area also, the Northwest. I just, I just don't know if, uh, you know, some of this cold will push here or some of this warm will stay over there. I I think it's it's a it's 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 rough to say it's tough to say i do think that especially towards the beginning the southwest will be hot since they're already becoming really hot and it seems like it will continue but as of now uh you know that's that's what i think thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to this channel and i'll catch you all guys on the next episode see ya